Hey folks, CA Rachna Ranade here and I welcome you all to a very interesting video which is Can Nifty Cross 20,000 before next Diwali? Have I taken some base for this calculation? Answer is obviously yes. The very first one is mathematical calculation. Second one is technical analysis and the third one is fundamental analysis. And of course, wishing you a very, very happy Diwali and a prosperous new year ahead. Now let's try and visualize what could be the target of Nifty based on mathematical calculations. But how do we forecast something? We can forecast something only by analyzing what happened in the past. Okay, so please try and understand the logic behind calculation of the target. First, what we are going to do, we are going to try and analyze what happened during the dot .com, bu uh, com bubble around 98, 2000. We are going to try and find out what was the low point and from that, how much percentage market bounced, number one. Number two, we are going to try and analyze what happened in 2008, Lehman Brothers crisis. What was the lowest point and from that, how much percentage did the market bounce up, okay? And similarly, based on that, we'll try and calculate the lowest point that we saw during Corona. From that, to what point can it bounce up? Simple till here, okay? So now, it's all about figures. Okay, let's tr try and analyze this chart wherein you can see that the low point was made somewhere around November 1998. By the way, all these technical analysis charts are on a weekly basis, right? So here you can see that the low point of Nifty was around 800. And from that level, it bounced up to a level of almost 1812 in February 2000, which is a jump of how much? 128%. Fair enough? Number one. Let's have a look at the 2008 crisis now. In 2008, you can see that the lowest point was made somewhere around October 2008, where the lowest point was 2550 on Nifty. Okay, what was the level up to which it went up in November 2010? High point that we saw in November 2010 was 6338. Post that, a little bit sideways movement we saw. Okay. Now, how much percentage jump did we see during this period? This percentage jump was around 148%. Fair enough till here. Now, please understand this base math. First jump, dot com bubble, it was a 128% jump. Second jump, Lehman Brothers crisis, it was around a 148% jump. Now, let's try and analyze how much was the gap between these two? How much percentage jump was between these two? If you compare, it's a 15.62% jump. Okay. Now, what do we have to calculate? What was the low point during Corona? During Corona, March 2020, the lowest point was 7,610. Okay. Now, we are going to analyze worst case scenario first. From 7,610, market jumps only 128%. The original dot com case scenario. Okay, if it jumps up only 128%, we could see 17,350 level coming up on Nifty. That level we have already surpassed, number one. Number two, if we see that uh, market jumps only by 148%, which is the 2008 jump, then we can see a, mar a target of 18,872 mathematically. Okay, is that level yet to be reached? Yes, as I'm shooting the video, this level is yet to be reached. Now the third scenario, wherein we try to calculate the percentage jump between the first two scenarios. Now what I am trying to do is add up 15.62% to the previous base of 148 and our new level will be 171.12 percentage jump. And if I check out 171.12 percent jump on a base of our low, which was the low 7610, then our target for Nifty comes up to 20,632. And what was the title of our video? Can Nifty cross 20,000? As per this good case scenario, answer is yes. Achha, what good case scenario? So in simple words, I'll tell you how I have classified it. First two scenarios, 128%, 148%. Worst case, nothing special. Next, I'm talking about a good case scenario. Why? I'm trying to consider how much percentage jump happened between these two scenarios. I'm trying to put I mean, I'm trying to see if this is forwarded. If we try to take this forward, then what could be the analysis? I am considering that as a good case scenario. So my worst case scenario average, worst case scenario average, 17,350, 18,872 average is coming to 18,800, sorry, 18,110. 
एंड गुड केस टारगेट इज कमिंग टू ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड सिक्स हंड्रेड एंड थर्टी टू वॉट कुड बी द बेस्ट केस सिनारियो फॉर बेस्ट केस सिनारियो वट आईव डन आईव टेकन अ टू हंड्रेड परसेंट जम्प बेस ऑफ सेवन थाउजेंड सिक्स हंड्रेड एंड टेन इफ आई कंसिडर दिस जम्प दैट टारगेट कम्स टू वॉट एनी एनी आइडिया इट इज कमिंग अप टू ट्वेंटी टू थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड एंड थर्टी बट दैट्स अ बेस्ट केस सिनारियो ओके यू वाइट बी वॉन्डरिंग वाई हैव आई टेकन दैट बेस्ट केस सिनारियो Are our GST numbers good? Yes. Is the retail individual invest investors participation very high? Yes. Is the FII participation very high? Yes. Are the companies taking good advantage of the PLI schemes? Yes. Are global players trying to see the China plus one model? What is China plus one? They are trying to see India as a China plus one as an alternative to China. All these things coming up to place. I believe that the jump will not be one hundred and twenty-eight percent, will not be one forty-eight percent, will not be one seventy plus percent. Maybe best case scenario can be two hundred percent jump also. And in this case, our target can come to twenty-two thousand eight thirty. Last. Now I have taken an average of worst, good, and best case scenario. Still, the target of Nifty comes to nineteen thousand nine hundred and twenty-one, almost twenty thousand. Now let's try and analyze and try and calculate what could be the target for Nifty based on technical analysis. So let's try and move on with our technical analysis part now. I am going to use Fibonacci retracement to calculate our Nifty target using technical analysis. So simple way to do that is Alt F. Alt F enables the Fibonacci level. By the way, if you are not aware about how to use all these things. I do have a separate course on technical analysis on my website rachna ranade dot com. Right. So with that, let's move on. I just tap here and I go downward till the lowest point. Okay. Now what I did was basically I tried to calculate that after this downfall, how much can it retrace? How much can it bounce back? Okay. So for that, if I just connect these highest points with the lowest points. these are my potential targets that i get using fibonacci retracement levels all right uh, if you remember i have already told you that i am on a weekly chart right so which are which are the first few levels let's understand the first target for nifty was 15162 we have well crossed that second target comes up to 19611 so are we still almost 1000 1500 points away from this target as i shoot the video the market has just gone below 18000 okay uh, so we are way still away from our second target which is 19611 what could be the potential third target it could be 24061 oh my god is that huge answer is yes so these could be the potential targets using what using fibonacci retracement levels So let's move on with our third method for calculating the Nifty target, and which is the third method using PE valuation method. Okay, so how do I get the Nifty PE? And uh, am I going to try and find out one day data for Nifty PE? Or ideally, I should calculate nice number of days Nifty PE data so that I can analyze the past and predict what can happen in the future, right? So just ninety hundred PE observations you have to calculate, right? Easy? No. So for that we have. Our Google solution. So just Google out Nifty PE ratio. Okay. Once you Google, of course you'll be taken to NSE India website. There's a newer version. Here you can select which index. You can select a time frame, whatever you want. So say uh, you want from the very uh, out of this, what do we want? We only want Nifty ka PE data, right? So I click on PE. I select from which time frame to which time frame. So assume that I'm selecting Jan to Okay, Jan first to let's say October twenty seventh, and I say get data. Once I do that, then it will allow me to just view it here itself, or it also allows me to download a CSV. Okay, so I'll just download this, and once I download, I will be able to show you. This is the already downloaded file. Now, if you see here. these are all the value values starting from january okay what i have done is that i have tried to calculate the average for each and every month so for january if you take out the entire average of this you will see that january ka average pe is 38.9 oh my god historically a pe above 20 used to be like something like an over situation okay it's high resistance kind of a situation for 20 
एंड अभी जनवरी ट्वेंटी वन वी फोर एट थर्टी एट पॉइंट नाइन नो वंडर वाई पीपल वर सेंग दैट ओ माई गॉड पी ई इज एट लाइक द हाइएस्ट लेवल वेरी स्ट्रेच वैल्यूएशन पक्का मार्केट विल फॉल डिड इट हैपन नो ओके लेट्स सी वॉट वॉट हैपन इन फेब्रुवरी फोर्टी पॉइंट एट टू एंटायर फेब्रुवरी का सो दिस इज अंटायर डेटा ओके आई हैव जस्ट टेकन द एवरेज ऑफ फेब्रुवरी फोर्टी पॉइंट एट टू मार्च फोर्टी पॉइंट वन अ बिग डिप दैट वी सॉ इन पी ई वॉज इन एप्रिल टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन वेर द निफ्टी पी ई शिफ्टेड फ्रॉम फोर्टी लेवल टू थर्टी टू लेवल वाई आई हैव ऑल्सो रिटर्न द रीजन इयर क्वार्टरली अर्निंग स्टार्टेड एंड मेजर आई टी रिजल्ट स्टार्टेड टू कम आउट बिकॉज ऑफ विच वॉट हैपन वॉज दैट the eps increased okay now simple p upon e if eps increases my denominator is increasing my pe valuation will shrink okay that's why you saw a big shrink amount from 40 to 32 in may the quarterly earnings continued with all major banking manufacturing other nifty showing good numbers it further shrank to 29.98 to 29.09 to 28.11 and right now Till August, now we can see twenty six point eight one. Has has it gone down from a big level of almost forty plus to twenty six point eight one? Yes. Are we much comfortable right now? Absolutely yes. Now wait. As I'm shooting the video, the latest data available with me is twenty fifth October. Whatever I've downloaded, twenty fifth October. Right now I can see that Nifty is at a PE valuation of twenty seven point two nine. Okay. Closing figure. Of Nifty <clears throat> is eighteen thousand one fifty. Today is twenty eighth, by the way. Uh, this data available is of twenty fifth October. Okay, so eighteen thousand one fifty. So simple. How do I calculate EPS of Nifty? EPS of Nifty. Oh my God! How can I calculate that? Very easy. Eighteen thousand one fifty divided by what? Twenty seven point seven nine. That gives me a value of six hundred and sixty five point zero seven. Okay. Now please understand what is this? This is current EPS of Nifty. Okay. Now tell me <clears throat> if earnings are good enough, then ideally EPS of Nifty will increase or decrease. Obviously it will increase. Now what I have tried to do is I have tried to summarize this. Okay. Just have a look at this table now. Tell me what is the current Nifty current EPS right now? That's how I showed you six sixty five. If if I believe that by next year the EPS will grow by five percent. Very basic expectation. Still, EPS target will come to six ninety eight point two five. Average. If I feel EPS goes up by ten percent, my EPS target will be seven thirty one. By the way, how does how does this seven thirty one come up? Six sixty five cut ten percent. I'll add up. Okay, so six sixty five into one point one, something like that. It will come to seven thirty one point five. EPS aggressive target. If I feel fifteen percent, it will go up. Then my EPS target will be seven sixty four point seven five. Okay, now with this, if I say that current PE level is twenty seven, and if a PE re rating happens, okay, for those who are not very pro, you might not have heard this uh, terminology of PE re rating. But to simplify this, if strong fundamental and strong fundamentals start kicking in, the investors are ready to pay a higher price for the same company. That's what we call as a PE re-rating. So I'm assuming that PE gets re-rated from 27 to 29 to 32, and is 32 very high? Now you know the historical levels. Tell me how much was uh, PE, uh, Nifty ka PE in January? Or it was around 40 levels. January, February, 40 levels. I'm taking highest 32. Is it very aggressive? Not at all. Even if I take these growth targets of five, ten, and fifteen percent, even if I take PE levels of twenty-seven, twenty-nine, and thirty-two from the current EPS, Nifty target can come up to eighteen thousand eight fifty-three, twenty-one thousand two hundred fourteen, and best case scenario can come up to twenty-four thousand four hundred seventy-two. OMG! I hope you have understood how to calculate these levels using the PE method. Well, now that you have understood how to calculate the target of Nifty using all the three methods, let's try and summarize it up and see what could be the target if I average out all these targets using all these three methods, right? So have a look at this table. First case, if you remember, I talked about the worst case scenario, case three scenario. On historical basis, we had eighteen thousand hundred and ten as a target. Technical analysis basis, we had fifteen thousand one sixty two as a target, and PE based, we had a Eighteen thousand eight hundred and fifty-three target. So, what is the possible Nifty target after one year? 
वर्स्ट केस सिनारियो इज सेवेंटीन थाउजेंड थ्री हंड्रेड एंड सेवेंटी फाइव ओके एज आई शूट द वीडियो वी आर ऑलमोस्ट एटीन थाउजेंड लेवल सो द डाउन साइड इज नॉट मोर देन थाउजेंड पॉइंट ओके Now, what could be a good case scenario? Have a look at this. So, all these figures you can read on your own as well. Average of historical, technical analysis, and PE based comes to twenty thousand four eighty six. Now, this is like more than ten percent upside from where we are today. This is like good or average scenario. Okay, have a look at the best case scenario now. Best cases again, average of all these three is coming up to twenty three thousand seven hundred and eighty eight. That's way above where we stand today. Correct. Now what I'm doing is that now let me take a further average of what of the worst scenario, of the good scenario, and of the best case scenario. Average vertical average is coming to twenty thousand five hundred and fifty. Okay, is this still almost eleven percent from the current uh, where we are currently right now? Yes, almost eleven percent, twelve percent upside from where we are right now. Okay. Now two things I want to clarify at this point. Possibility number one. could there be a possibility that this target is not hit at all yes why not let's say god forbid but if the wave 3 of covid comes up possible in that case we might see a sharp correction possibility number 2 uh, some war starts between two countries or you, i can say us china relations again go from bad to worst or from average to bad whatever is the scenario in simple words any scenario which we are completely unaware of right now achanak se pops up okay in that case could the nifty close below where we are today possible okay but ideally if nothing unusual happens we might hit a target of 20550 in one year now in this case how can i ride that upside of 10 12% from where am i today if i park my money in fd i'll get what 5% 6% this is a potential upside of almost 10 to 12% how do i ride that how do i get benefit out of that exactly this is the part that we are going to discuss in the next part of the video and i'm sure you are interested to know about how can you ride that 10 to 12% potential journey uh, you might be in a scenario wherein you say that i don't know which specific stock to select in i don't know which specific sector to select in it's okay invest directly in an index in that case right if you were to select in an uh, you, if you were to invest in an index fund first you need to scan all the index funds and choose which one is the best out of this now what could be the various parameters to shortlist an index fund possibility number 1 you can check the tracking error of that index fund okay lower the tracking error better it is for us okay second point that you can check is you can check their expense ratio ideally lower the expense ratio better it is these are the top two parameters to check while selecting an index funds but if you were to select a normal index fund other than an index fund basically in that case there could be many many more parameters and that's my course on magic of mutual funds which you can surely check out to know using almost 10 parameters to how to shortlist good mutual funds which suit your risk appetite right so moving on Uh, what i did was i went to money control and on money control website i tried to find out all the index funds okay after having a look at all the index funds i have shortlisted these three index funds which are icici prudential nifty index fund idbi nifty index fund and uti nifty index fund uh have all these three promoted or have these three paid me anything no this is not a paid promotion uh, based on expense ratio and tracking error these three are the top three index funds okay now out of these three which one is the best needless to say which one has the lowest tracking error uh, lowest tracking error it's icici prudential nifty index fund so 0.06 which is the lowest so that's the best one for me and if i'm talking about expense ratio it's very close to uh, idbi nifty index fund but tracking error being lowest i feel that icici prudential nifty index fund is the best out of these three based on which two parameters tracking error and expense ratio okay clear to clear now have a look at these two index funds navi nifty 50 index fund and motilal oswal nifty 50 index fund if you see that expense ratio is way too less in these two funds navi has an expense ratio of just 0.06% and motilal oswal uh, nifty 50 index fund has a expense ratio of just 0.1% now you might be like where is tracking error just for your information it's not mandatory sebi says it's not mandatory to disclose the tracking error so if you are okay to invest in a index fund without knowing its tracking error out of these two i would have surely 
selected navi nifty 50 index fund because its expense ratio is very less but if you feel that i want more and more disclosures i want to know about how much is the tracking error then these two will not fit into your criteria i hope you have understood that if you choose to invest in one of these whatever i discuss or any index fund of your choice you will be able to ride the journey of that 10 to 12 percent again there are two possibilities here either you do a lump sum investment or you do an SIP. If you ask me what is my choice, I always prefer an SIP. Well, I have talked about my target of Nifty till next Diwali. But what is your target of Nifty? Please let me know in the comment section. And if you feel that investing in index fund can be a good idea, don't forget to share this video with your friends, family members, relatives. Till then, happy Diwali. Take care. Jai Hind and bye-bye.